Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Autogefühl. Today with me, AJ and Michelle. I know it's barely spring, but I got a little bit ahead of myself and I'm in the sunny, beautiful Mediterranean island of Mallorca. This weekend, I have the keys to the all new Volkswagen T-Cross. Well, they say big things come in small packages and it is a pretty compact package, but does it have big potentials? Well, we'll find out on today's episode. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. So it is on the MQB A0 platform, so it's a platform sibling with the Polo, not the Golf, that will be the T-Rock. So this shares its platform with the Polo, the Ibiza, the A1, and of course, more like this kind of a body style, the Seat Arona. It looks like an SUV, so it's got a very flat, vertical front grille, kind of like an amalgamation of some of the different elements that are used throughout the Volkswagen SUV range. Like for example, the front grille, I think is very Tiguan-like, but down here, as you guys can see, you know, there's kind of like this V or like an X, you know, if you go both ways, which is kind of similar to the T-Rock. So in that way, it is a bit of an amalgamation of different SUV design lines. You have different trims. Over here we have the R-Line, so you can see a badge over there. Furthermore, this kind of uh, element that, that flanks in the bottom of the uh, bumper is in the body color, whereas in the other design line it would be in chrome. The logo is two-dimensional, there's parking sensors down here, a dash of chrome at the bottom to kind of give it a little bit more of a flashy look, and overall it does look like a baby SUV. As standard, the T-Cross comes with halogen lamps and the daytime running light will be down here. But if you get the optional LED, the full LED headlamps like we have here, then of course the main lamps are LED and the daytime running light is kind of like this C-shape or L-shaped strip along the bottom of the main cluster and that would be just a fog lamp housing. This car is 4.11 meters long, which means yes, it is longer than the Polo, but of course shorter than the T-Rock. Also, it has been raised by four centimeters, which means there is a little bit more ground clearance than the Polo. Although it's still only a front wheel drive, it can handle a little bit more of rough roading, as you guys can see here. The wheels, by the way, start at 16 inches as standard, but you can optionally get them up to 18 inches like the one we have here. Really sporty with a dual tone finish, goes well with this R-Line. If you've seen our videos of the T-Cross earlier at the world premiere and in the studio, you will know that you can also get the wheels with the body color. That might not be to everybody's taste, but it certainly makes the car pop. Again, like we were discussing, they've gone for a very traditional SUV style body, uh, body sh shape for the T-Cross. Unlike even the T-Rock, which I think is a little bit more sleek, a little bit of a crossover car SUV kind of a design, but here it's boxy. Of course, the quintessential blacked off wheel arches, although they are not squared off, they are still very circular. The R-Line badge over here, tall doors, very vertical, boxy again. Some subtle design lines over here along the door to give that little bit of a play between light and shadow. The bottom of the doors are also flanked by these interesting contours, which I think add a little bit more of the, of the athletic flavor to this car. And overall, it is a pretty compact shape, but it does feel very roomy on the inside. At the back, at the top, we have a glossy black spoiler of sorts. Again, with the R-Line to kind of evoke a little bit more sporty character to the car. The rear window is actually not that large. It does seem fairly narrow, but at least it's quite wide. Down here, yeah, this is a bit of a new, fresh design that perhaps is a little bit new for Volkswagen. They don't usually do such large kind of, um, uh, you know, light in the, on the bumper, on the hatch, rather. But uh, in fact, these are just reflectors. This is not an actual light, but it still is quite bold. Might not be to everybody's taste, but I like it. I think it's fresh. It kind of uh, also makes the car seem a little bit more youthful. C-shaped rear lights somehow also remind me of the Volkswagen Up 
So I see a little bit of that character in this car. Going further down, reversing camera, T-cross over here. A very clean bumper design, no real exhaust tips, and of course also no fake exhaust tips, which I think is a great, great way of doing it. So very neat, and the actual exhaust is further down, hidden away. Let's take a look inside the trunk. This is 385 liters, which is not that much. Um, I think the Arona is a little bit better in terms of the volume, but it is a very usable area. It is very square and it is very uh, easy to load things. Not much of a lip here. You just have to get it up to this height. Of course, a very large well down here. Um, of course, for the European market, you can just get the emergency kit, but for other markets around the world, especially South America, it is very important for those customers to have a, um, a spare tire. So that's where this would be going in. It's very easy to get rid of this parcel shelf, like such, just a couple pops this way and that way, and it comes out. I'm just gonna put it away right here for the minute because I wanna show you, of course, you can split the seats in a 60-40 fashion, but you can also slide the back bench, and I'll show you once I get inside. You can already see it's a very flat loading bay, but there's another party trick that the T-Cross has, and that's up here, because what you can do is tumble the front seat down, and this also does lay fairly flat, and this way you really do have a very large or very long loading area for you to carry some, you know, maybe planks of wood for your cupboard from Ikea. So it might be small, but it is certainly trying to be as practical as possible. So let's take a look inside the car, but first here's the key fob, uh, nothing new here, nothing fancy to talk about. So by the way, this color is called the Reef Blue, so kind of like Thomas Blue. Let's take a look inside. So the door is fairly upright and fairly tall, opens really wide, gives you good access. Of course, now this being four centimeters higher off the ground and the seating position also being taller, it is very easy to get in and out of. But uh, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself again. Materials on the door around here are very monotone, very hard. Uh, and there is some nice textured um, pattern inlay, which kind of breaks that monotony. More colors here, but all are hard plastic, except for the part that really matters, which is here where you put your elbow. So. I can totally live with that. This is a small budget car. It is the smallest and the cheapest SUV that Volkswagen make at the moment. Getting inside, again, super easy. This is actually about six centimeters higher in terms of the seating position overall than the Polo. That's because of the four inches, sorry, four centimeters higher ground clearance and just overall the stance is a little bit um, higher. I always enjoy driving with the seating position in the lowest setting, but I must say, and uh, I'll talk more about this later on, the dashboard does feel a bit tall and maybe you want to give a couple pumps to sit a little bit taller. But apart from that, a very wide dashboard, kind of, uh, kind of a unison theme going on with that textured element that we saw on the door continuing through here all the way across and wrapping around to the other door. So, Let's hop inside and take a closer look. The steering wheel actually has a little bit of a different design. I quite like it. There's a lot more angles and contours in the center here, almost like a BMW. For some reason, it reminds me of that, but it has its own identity, looks really nice. Perforated material where you would put your hands, so good grip. A flat bottom, R-Line logo, and a lot of controls for, you know, working the uh, instrument uh, cluster and the infotainment system. So this comes with the optional virtual cockpit. Here you have one large screen which gives you a lot of information, for example your driving data, uh, different assistance systems which by the way there are plenty in this car like uh, lane assist with intervention, 
adaptive cruise control, which monitors the distance with the car in front, blind spot monitoring, rear traffic alert, front assist, which is really great. By the way, the blind spot monitor and the front assist come as standard, which I think is a great initiative. Apart from that, you have the navigation. So actually you can have the map on the, um, there you go, you can see it now, you can have the map on the dashboard itself. You can even make it completely big with the speedometer just over there. You can even put it kind of like in between with this other view, but it's important to note, and I'm, I guess you guys might have already known about this. You cannot have the map on this dashboard, the virtual cockpit, as well as your infotainment system. You can either have it in one place or the other. It's an either or kind of a thing. So you can see this button here to hop between the maps in the two uh, screens. But in this way, if you have the map here, you know, you can, if you put it over there, then whoever's sitting on the side can be the DJ. They can connect their phone with uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So that makes it really easy to stream from your phone directly. Uh, you can connect with Bluetooth. Of course, you have USB drives where you can add um, your own, um, like you can just put a pen drive with a lot of music. You can store different uh, images and so on. So it's very, very something that we're quite used to, very intuitive, works pretty well. And I also like the fact that while you have soft touch buttons on the edges of the screen, you also have um, you also have knobs for the, uh, you know, things like the, some other functions, especially in the navigation, you can use this to zoom in and out. So it does make life a little bit easier and it's a good combination. Smooth interfaces could be a little bit better, of course, but can't complain too much. You get 6.5 inch touchscreen as standard. You can also get the optional eight inch. Then you can also spec navigation and uh, Apple connectivity, Android connectivity, and so on. Further down, let's continue our look. Air conditioning vents down here. So I think it's placed really well. There is um, some more hot buttons over here. Driving mode selector. So you have eco, normal, sport, and individual. As you can see, we'll take a look at this once we're driving. By the way, Michelle, while you have the camera pointed up, there's also a, a cubby hole over here, which also has a rubber mat, so you can drop your phone over there or something like that. Pretty interesting. So <laughs> back down here, dual zone air conditioning with seat heaters, um, an inductive phone charging port, couple USB ports over there, 12 volt power socket and engine start stop. And of course this car that we're driving comes with a six speed manual transmission. Our car also comes with the optional Beats audio system, which sounds really good. I always appreciate a good sound stereo system in a car. CD player, SD card slot for your navigation, a damped glove box, a tray underneath the passenger seat for some other items. Couple bottle holders, although they're not adaptive, they don't have that spring-loaded clamp, but there's some bigger bottle holder cubby holes on the door. A large central armrest, uh, or rather a deep cubby hole in the center armrest. So you can put some more items over there. The armrest itself is can be extended and as a ratchet to increase the height if you would like, would you like it that way. So overall, it's a pretty comfortable place to be in. All right, let's take a look in the back seat. The door opens nice and wide, has a very squared uh, opening. So it's easy to put your child seats. The isofix pints are also located right on the outside, so they're very easy to identify and very easy to attach the seat. The seat belts are also, can be kind of clamped away with this little clip, which I really like. So when you do tumble the seat forward like so, they don't come in the way. Nice little touch. The door, however, the materials on the inside are all completely hard, even the place where you put your elbow. But on the plus side, getting inside is really easy, thanks to it being a SUV with a higher seating position. The seat back is also at a really good angle. It's not reclining too far back. At the same time, it's not upright. I don't think that's always comfortable. It's nice. The bench itself is also pretty high. Again, the higher seating position. So I have really good under thigh support. Even though the seat is really low down, there's plenty of space for me to slide my feet under the front seat. I'm five foot eight or about 1.7 meters. This is set to my driving position. And as you can see, ample knee room, 
adequate headroom. So you can even watch Thomas's review. He fits in quite well inside this car. A cubby hole here uh, doesn't seem to have any air conditioning vents, which I think is an omission, but in this segment, I think it's totally acceptable. A couple USB power sockets over here. You can see a top tether point for the front seat, passenger seat, which is nice. Also some pockets, but what's pretty interesting is you can slide the bench up by quite a bit actually. And in this way, yeah, I probably wouldn't be happy sitting like this, but the plus side is it liberates a lot more space on the trunk. Let's take a look under the hood. By the way, this power dome in the middle also looks pretty cool. So what powers this little SUV? Well, you have a choice of petrol and diesel engines at the moment. Um, first of all, you have the 1.0 uh, liter TSI turbo petrol three cylinder engine like the one we have here. This makes either 95 horsepower or 115 horsepower, which is the one we have. The 95 horsepower engine comes with a five speed manual, whereas the 115 horsepower engine comes with a six speed manual or a seven speed DSG. There is also a 1.5 liter TSI four cylinder turbo petrol engine, which makes 150 horsepower, that's 150 horsepower. Um, again, very familiar engines from the Volkswagen portfolio. That also comes with the seven speed DSG only. In terms of diesel, currently there is only the 1.6 TDI, which makes 95 horsepower and comes coupled with the five speed manual or the seven speed DSG. And they're all only front wheel drive. Okay, we are in sunny Mallorca, starting off in Palma. And I know this beautiful location at the north of the island near some hills. And um, I wanna go there. It's one of my favorite places. So on the way, this will give us a great chance to test the new T-Cross out in the city, which let's be honest is perhaps its natural habitat on the highway through some winding country roads. And we can analyze it um, that way. I think I gotta go right, so let me get across. Again, already I can tell you, in the city, it's very easy to kind of put the car in narrow spaces, change lanes really quickly, fit it into narrow old European streets here in the, in the heart of Palma near the beautiful cathedral. Uh, we were just driving around a little bit. No problem, no sweat. I mean, of course, you could probably fit larger cars in these roads, but, but the real thing, the real advantage of a small car is that you don't feel scared about it. Like if you guys remember a few months ago, Michelle and I were also here driving the Porsche Macan. And that first of all is a Porsche and it's a little bit bigger. And when we were driving through the, the inside of the old town, it was a little bit nerve wracking to make sure that you don't hit the rims, you don't hit the, um, you, know, you know, it's really tight and you don't want to damage the car. Whereas with a T-Cross, it's really small. It kind of wraps itself around you. It's really nimble. So in the city, it's really great. However, I must say, um, the visibility could have been better. I mean, this is an SUV, so it has that tall stance. You are sitting, I think, about six centimeters higher than you would in a Polo, thanks to, of course, the extra ground clearance itself, point number one, but also because the seats are more higher and a little further up, the dashboard is also quite shallow. But the windscreen, the front windscreen, isn't that large. I think it, it could have, first of all, come up a little bit more uh, towards your head and also the dashboard could have been a little bit lower. I think right now it's a bit too high. In fact, this reminds me of the Volkswagen Up. Uh, I drove the Up GTI when I did the special GTI episode. You guys should check out that video. And even there, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of that. Of course, the interior is very much like the Polo with the with the navigation screen, the, the, the dashboard here, the digital cockpit, so on and so forth. But this kind of a very tall, upright um, dashboard is a bit reminiscent of the Volkswagen up. But anyway, there are plenty of assistance systems and sensors to help you get around. It also has the auto start stop. So in city driving, it will shut the engine off when you come to a light to save a little bit of fuel. Turning circle again is really, really uh, nimble. And the steering wheel is also fairly light. So it's really easy to make quick corrections and maneuver, uh, maneuvering around in the city. The six-speed manual gearbox that comes with this 1.0 TSI is also not that bad. 
it has a fairly long throw, so it might not be the most sporty, but the clutch is really light to use. The brake pedal is very progressive. So again, in the city, it's a, it's a breeze to use. Being that three-cylinder turbo, there's plenty of torque low down in the rev range. So when you want to kind of make jumps between the between gaps in the traffic in the city, that also really helps out. I do also wish, you know, to kind of, in the same lines of visibility, I wish the cabin also had um, the sunroof because then it would make the interior feel a little bit nicer and brighter and a lot of black here uh, inside the cabin and this bright black roof liner kind of makes it feel a bit dark and, kind of, and a little bit more cramped. Lighter colors would be preferred for my taste and also subjectively, sorry, objectively, it is going to help you make, uh, feel the, uh, make the cabin feel a little bit bigger. So make sure you check out that option as well. Let's see how much mileage we're getting right now in the city. So we're getting about 8.7 liters, but um, earlier on when we were just heading out of the airport, it was about 7.5. So let's wait till the end of the drive to see how it scores. Of course, it'll get much better. Now we're heading out of Palma and getting up into the north where my favorite, favorite area of the island is. So let's test the T-Cross and its behavior out on the highway. We saw that in the city, it fits right in. It feels like a little mouse in the jungle. Very nimble, very agile. But does that mean on the highway it's, it's not sure-footed? In one word, not really, no. It feels pretty good. And that's because, of course, it has the wider track that you get with the MQB A0 platform. It also has a pretty long wheelbase. It's in fact a little bit longer than the Polo as well. So it does have that, at least that minimum amount of size for it to feel confident. Because of the tall body, yes, you do feel a little bit more of the wind noise at times, or maybe I do feel that maybe this, you know, it, it is more susceptible to being pushed around. Today, it's, the weather is quite fine, but I have a feeling, and it, I did feel that a little bit as well. But apart from that, you know, it does feel really good and very composed. There's a lot of assistance systems to aid your highway cruising. For example, it has adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist. So there is a button here, which I can use to set that. I can uh, set the distance I wanted to maintain with the car in front. I can turn it on and then I press the set button and now it's set to 100 kilometers per hour. There's a distance that I've set to maintain with the car in front, which would be, which would be safe distance. And it also has steering intervention. So yes, even the T-Cross is level two semi-autonomous, which means that when it comes up to a corner, it will turn for you. And I will demonstrate that um, in a minute. So here we are, we're coming around a very gentle left-hand bend. I'm gonna still keep my hands near the wheel because there is traffic around me and it is not uh, completely autonomous, but <laughs> it, does, it does steer you in place a little bit. You can see now we're going around this left-hand bend and the steering wheel is automatically turning. So, and of course it notices that the car in front has also pulled away. So now it is accelerating and continuing to keep me in line and also giving me a warning to take over the steering. So it doesn't work for an extended period of time, a few minutes here and there, which only is used, you know, should be used as an assistance and not a replacement for a driver. We're not there yet. And it's interesting to note that this uh, car also has things like, of course, the uh, front assist, which will monitor the distance with cars in front and automatically hit the brakes in case of an emergency and also has blind spot monitoring. And these two are actually standard. And I think that's a great initiative that Volkswagen has taken. You know, blind spot monitoring is perhaps something that's usually seen as, a, as an option by most manufacturers, um, even within Volkswagen in the, in the past. But now I think it's a, it's a good initiative that they say, you know what, just take it for free. It's there because it's something that's very useful when you're pulling out uh, across the lanes and on the highway, so that's great. But of course you can get, get the other assistance systems as options, the adaptive cruise control and uh, well, rear view cameras, so on and so forth. Apart from that, let's see, the steering wheel now, I am in normal mode, so I think this is a great balanced driving uh, profile. 
it gives you good responses, it gives you good steering weight, and it gives you good um, you know, throttle response. So it does feel pretty comfortable on the highway. Now that I have the adaptive cruise control on, it doesn't really matter to me because I'm not accelerating, the car is doing it on its own. But even that is uh, gonna change depending on which profile you have it. So if you have it in eco mode, then of course, um, you know, the car doesn't rev that high. The engine uh, has a little bit more of a muted, dull response so that it's, it's not, um, you know, revving too high and consuming more power. But even with the adaptive cruise control, if you have it in eco mode, and let's say the car in front pulls out, the way the car accelerates is also very gradual, again, to be more economical. Even the air conditioning profile is also more economical. So that way, yeah, these driving modes are very useful. I think it's nothing we've, uh, we're, we're, we're strangers to. We've seen these profiles and the way the software works across the VW range. And even the, in the lower part of the food chain, you know, with the MQB A0, we've seen that. So it's good to see it being carried over, of course. And the steering does actually, now that the lane keep assist is on, feels a little bit extra heavy and a little bit, um, seems like it has a mind of its own, which is great in a way. Like right now I'm trying to, trying to push the car a little bit to the right and it's really fighting me, the steering wheel. So it doesn't feel natural at all, but you know, on the highway in these kind of situations, it's pretty good. Let's just check the mileage that we're getting. I saw that we had a pretty large number when we were in the city, but already it's saying 7.2 liters for 100 kilometers, which is a good start. We've just been on the highway for about 30 kilometers or less than that really. So by the time we reach the top of the, of the island, it should be much better. We'll check in on that later on. The seating position and the seats are also fairly comfortable. Um, good visibility out the sides again. Visibility out the front on the highway is not such a big problem because yeah, you're not, you're not, you don't have to be, you're not looking at all the, you know, the minute little rocks or sidewalks and things like that. It's, it's much more open when you're on the highway, so it's okay. But I do wish the windshield was a little bit bigger. Road noise is at a minimum. Um, tire noise is also very minimum. Wind noise is not a problem really, but it is, it, it is something you should, you should be aware of in that it is a more upright, boxy SUV. So there is going to be a little bit more than, let's say, the Ibiza or the Polo. But overall, on the highway, this car feels also quite at home. So, it is a car with multiple personalities. There's one personality that I definitely want to test out, and that is its sporting personality. So, I can't wait to get up to the mountains, and I'll pick it up once we're there. This is that road that I was talking about. This is leading up to the mountains to a great lookout vista at the north of the island. So I have the car in sport mode. Here, the throttle response is sharpened. Steering is also a little bit heavier. This three cylinder sounds really nice. This 1.0 TSI, uh, 115 horsepower, something I'm quite familiar with. I've driven this in several other MQB A0 cars and also the UP GTI, where it is in a similar state of tune. A lot of bicyclists here, so I'm gonna to have to be a little bit more careful. But the truth is with this engine, um, you need to really keep it over 3000 RPM for it to really pick up pace. It does sound pretty cool. It's got that nice three cylinder burbling sound. You don't really hear too much of the turbo. Brakes pretty well, dives into the corner. It does have a little bit of body roll, which I guess, you know, cannot be avoided. Steering feels not that great, to be honest. It is a little bit softer, even with this um, uh, sport mode. It is heavier, but that doesn't really make it much more, um, you know, doesn't give me too much more uh, feedback. It is not necessarily a fast track either. Gear lever, as with MQB A0 VW cars, could be a little bit crisper, so it does feel a bit spongy. It is a little bit of a long throw. Actually, now that I'm putting it a little bit through its paces, the body roll is not that bad. It is very, it is a little bit more noticeable than of course the Polo or the Ibiza, but it's not something that really takes away from the fun. You have to get used to the steering rack being a little bit slower. The brakes are great, it gives you really good control, very confidence inspiring. 
visibility is not too bad actually. This windshield, I still wish it was bigger, but the A-pillar is not that obtrusive. It's, uh, it gives you pretty good look out when you're going into a left-hand corner. Also, thanks to that turbocharger, there's always torque, even at low down in the rev range. But of course, when you're driving like this, the mileage goes down. I was just seeing numbers around 6.1, liters for 100 kilometers now that I've finished that stint on the highway but of course now thanks to driving like this it has become a little bit more but I think overall it's not something you'll feel guilty about you won't feel guilty driving this car fast because it's not that uh, gives you good mileage regardless it's not such a um, it's not going to consume that much it's a very small engine it's turbocharged and it's designed to be very frugal so even when you are thrashing it still not bad at all. It revs pretty, wide, pretty nicely, it gives you a nice little buzz as it hits 6,000 RPM. Now, you, now I'm, you know, I'm getting used to the steering, it just takes a little bit of time to get used to this rack. It could have been a little bit more progressive, it could have been a little bit sharper, I could have used a little bit more feedback, but one thing I'm quite okay with, you know, I think is the, the, the body roll. It is an SUV, it is tall, but it's not really uh, it's not really terrible at all. And yes, when you want to have a little bit of fun, I think this car is fairly capable. Of course, this is only front wheel drive, so I think that's also quite okay. I don't think it makes sense to have four wheel drive on a car with such a short wheelbase and you know something which is not necessarily ever going to go off-road and even on-road kind of grip and um, controlling the yaw and things like that I don't think it makes sense for a car of this size the steering wheel is fairly large as is with all Volkswagens I do still prefer the Ibiza steering wheel with the MQB A0 it's a little bit smaller already has a little bit of a faster steering rack and of course it's much lower it's even lower than the Polo so certainly a much more um, engaging car to drive but leave this in second gear and zip around the island why not so overall today we drove the T-Cross in the city where I think it's right at home with its compact dimensions and on the highway though it's compact it does feel very confidence inspiring and very stable and certainly out on the twisty roads here in the mountains it also comes into its own it feels fun to drive it feels engaging but a couple things that I wish were a little bit better which I think are some of my standard complaints with the MQB A0 is first of all the gearbox. So I think Volkswagen can develop uh, a little bit more of a crisp throw action. You know, something more, something perhaps more on the lines of a Mazda 3. I think they have that kind of a throw and feel down to an art. I think it's, you know, that rifle bolt action that people keep talking about, where you feel the intricate, low tolerance, metal pieces and components well oiled slotting into place with each other it just gives you that much more tactile you know kinesthetic joy and i think that's lacking with most of these gearboxes that i've driven here uh, with the polo the ibiza and the t-cross and the up as well so that's one thing i wish you know this is a brand new car maybe they could have already addressed that but i guess for the market that this is aimed towards that's not something they really care about so maybe I'm just nitpicking and I think the windshield could have been a little bit larger and the dashboard could also have been a little bit lower and yes it's just, you can still maintain a very high tall seating position but allowing the windscreen to be bigger would give you much more light in the cabin which would make it seem bigger I think that's something that they could have changed as well Let's summarize today's episode of the all-new Volkswagen T-Cross. With prices starting just under 18,000 euros, it does command a little bit of a premium over the Polo. Nevertheless, it is still on average 2,500 euros cheaper than the T-Rock. And for that, you do get quite a lot of car. First of all, 
it is an SUV. So that means you have a higher ground clearance, which is always useful to tackle rougher roads. The upright seating position is also something that a lot of people really appreciate with SUVs. However, I do wish that the front windshield was a little bit bigger, and I would definitely recommend you pick a lighter color for the interior so that it feels a little bit more airy. In the city, it fits right in thanks to its compact dimensions, easy to maneuver, easy to park. But at the same time, on the highway, it is very composed, thanks in part to the assistance systems like the adaptive cruise control and the lane keeping assist. There's also a lot of technology and kit like the Beats audio system, the virtual cockpit, traffic sign recognition and phone connectivity. On the twisty roads, I think it is also pretty good. Of course, there is a little bit of body roll, but I, I really recommend this 1 liter TSI with 115 horsepower because it's got good enough power at low range. That turbo also means a lot more torque higher on in the rev range as well. If you keep it above 3000 RPM, that's the sweet spot really. And it does sound pretty fun. The six-speed manual might not be the most enthusiastic uh, for all of us, but it is doing the job pretty well. The throw could be a little bit better, but for the market, I think it does the job just right. Overall, it does seem that good things come in small packages and the T-Cross is no exception. So, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know, put it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.